Although GameMaker has built-in ways to show images on the screen, either through sprites or backgrounds, you can actually draw them to the screen yourself, which is a more robust way of doing it if you need to do that in your game. And I've set up two objects here, one for drawing sprites and one for drawing backgrounds. And in the room, which is my standard 640 by 640 chalkboard, I've got this with no sprite is object draw background and this one has a sprite and it's object draw sprite. So I've used this sprite here. This is a menu button that I've used for one of my games and I've centered the origin point. So let's look at drawing sprites first. If I hop in here, I have a create event. It's just for one variable. I just want to put C white into col just to make it shorter for me to use inside of arguments for functions. Now because we're going to be drawing, we have to use the draw event and I've got just one little piece of code here that I'm going to execute and here it is. Let's maximize that window as much as possible. Now something to realize about your sprites when you use draw events. If your object already has a sprite set here under sprite when you use your drop down and you pick one, and you put in a draw event, let's comment out everything. So I have absolutely no code running here, but I do have a draw event. This will overwrite the drawing of this sprite. And I'll show you what I mean by running the game right now. Here it is, so here's my empty room, because if you remember, I did have a menu button here, but it's not being drawn. And that's because if you put a draw event into an object that has a sprite, this will overwrite the drawing of this sprite by default. So how do we get it back? Well, we use a very simple function that has no arguments and it's just draw self. This will make sure that even though we're using a draw event, we will also draw this sprite right here. So now that I've used draw self, we can actually see our sprite in the room. And here it is. Here's our menu button right dead center in the middle of the room uh, because we use draw self inside the draw event. Now the reason we do that is because we can make it do multiple things. So we could have draw self and then we can draw a whole bunch of other stuff and this will make sure that we still get the default sprite which is important because it could be animated it could be doing things outside of whatever else we're drawing. But for the purposes of learning about drawing sprites let's not draw ourself. Let's draw something else. So the first function is draw sprite. And this needs four arguments. It needs the sprite resource. So I've chosen SP circle. So that's the sprite I'm going to use. Then it needs the sub image. That's the frame you want to start on. So if I go into here and I edit my sprite, I only have one frame. I have image index zero. I could have a lot more. Like for instance, let's just add some sort of animation to it. Like let's say we want it shrink to center over 16 frames. So there's our animation it's shrinking to center. So I could tell it to start on any one of these sub images. I could say, okay, sub image nine. But in this case, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to keep it just as the one frame, and I'm going to choose frame zero, which is the only frame. If you were switching from one sprite to another sprite, and you wanted to make sure that they were in line with the animation so that frame 3 went to frame 4 when you switch over and doesn't go to frame 0, you can actually type in image index. This variable stores the current frame of the animation for the sprite you're using. So if this was animating and it got up to frame 9 and then I switch to a different sprite, if I put image index, that next sprite will start at frame 9 just to keep the animation smooth and fluid. But since I only have one frame, it's frame 0, I'm not going to do anything else, but that's what sub image is for when you draw a sprite. Then you decide where it's going to go. I'm just going to use the current X and Y position. Now something to note here is I've got it centered. So if I go and draw this sprite out, here's what it looks like. So here it is, nothing special. It's centered to the middle of the room. That's why I drew these lines so we can see where it is. And that's it. I'm not drawing the menu button anymore because I didn't say draw self. Uh, if I did use draw self and then I draw circle, what would happen is everything that's drawn is drawn from the most distance, the, the deepest depth, all the way to the foreground. So if I said draw self here, it would draw the button. 
And then if I said draw sprite, it would draw this circle on top of this button. So here's what that would look like. And here it is. Because of the order of drawing, I said draw self. And then I went to the next part of the code that said draw this sprite, which will be on top. Everything will be drawn from the deepest depth all the way to as close to the foreground as possible. But we don't want to draw this menu button. We want to continue with what we're learning. So the next one is draw sprite with some extended portion, which is still going to be your sprite, your sub image, and the location, the coordinates, X and Y. And now you get to change the X scale, the Y scale, the rotation, the color, and the alpha. That's a lot of stuff that it gets to do. So if you remember, scales work as 100%. So one being 100%, that's that's totally normal, The whatever scale we have it set here. And then we can set it as 50% or 200%, which we don't need to put in the zeros, but that would be 200% in the X scale, leaving Y scale normal. Then we can change the rotation, which is just going to be degrees. So zero faces to the right, which is totally normal, exactly how it's drawn here. But we could rotate that. See, the arrow's pointing to the right. But let's change it to something like 135. So this will be rotated all the way over here. And color, this is the blend color. If you use just white, it means you're not going to blend any color with this sprite when you draw it. Now, if you remember COL, my variable, holds C white. So I'm not going to blend it with a color. Just going to keep it normal. And then the transparency or the alpha, which I'm going to put at 100%. I want it fully opaque. So here's what something like that might look like. Here it is. So the X scale, now remember, when I talk about the X scale and the Y scale, it stretches this image before it even draws it. So it has nothing to do with the X and Y of the room. It has to do with the X and Y of the actual sprite. It used to be pointing to zero, which was this way, and I rotated it 135 degrees to point toward this side of the screen. And there's no blend and it's fully opaque. Now I could blend a color with it, Let's just blend red. So it, it'll create some sort of a red blend with what's already there. But actually, since we already have red and white, let's just blend green. Then we can see how green and red blend together. And there we go. We've got green blending with our white, which will obviously make green. There's not really any blending happening. And the green blending with the red kind of makes black because it's just there's too much color information. So it's just darkening it all. But you can blend colors together. This is one way you could... Um, with any function that requires color blending to make an enemy turn more and more red to let the player know that that enemy is being damaged more and more and is about to die. Something along those lines. I usually use just C white because I don't want to blend colors with it. Now we have draw sprite part. This will actually just draw a part of the sprite. So once again, we're just going to use the circle. We're just going to use the first sub image. Now you decide the left and top coordinate where you want the drawing to start. So if we come back to our sprite, what it's talking about is this canvas right here. This is 64 by 64, and it's asking where should the top left corner be? So you can really put it anywhere between 00, zero which is up here, all the way to 64x or 64y. And I'm going to leave it at 00, zero for now to show you what it's going to look like. And then you decide the width and height. So this is from your left top corner or wherever that point may be, how much of the information from this image should be drawn. So in pixels, how far out on the width and how far out on the height. Now I've chosen 32 and 32, which is one half X and one half Y. That should give me a quarter of the circle because it should only come out 32 this way and 32 this way, which is the center. So it's only gonna draw this top left quadrant of my circle. Then once again, you just decide where on the screen you want it drawn, and I'm going to draw it at the X and Y, the current X and Y coordinate of my object, wherever that is in the room. And here's what that looks like. Something to note here is that although I've set the center point, the origin point, to be the center of my circle, whenever you use certain drawing functions, it changes it to the top left. So it's no longer centered, it's now the top left origin point. That's something you really can't avoid, but it's something to keep in mind. And as you can see, I've only drawn this first quadrant of my circle. As I said, we chose 0, 0, so that's the very top left corner of the canvas of the sprite. Then we went 32x and 32y, or width and height. And then I said, just draw that portion. 
and that's how you draw just one part of a sprite. So you can always cut it off, and if you really wanted to, you could, I don't know, cut them off into different quadrants, and then make them move away from each other as if things blew up. There are different things you can do. It, you know, you can play around. You can always animate variables. So if I wanted to change this just to show it a different way, let's choose 32 as the left and 32 as the top. Now our top left corner will be at the center of the circle. And let's see what that looks like. Here we go. We start at the top left again, but this time I moved the left top coordinate to the center of the circle. And then I drew 32 out from this way and 32 out from this way. And whatever was in that portion of the canvas is drawn out to the screen, which is the bottom right quadrant of my circle. Of course, you can add EXT to part, and now we get draw sprite part EXT. So this is the same thing as EXT here, which includes the X scale, the Y scale, the color, and the alpha, and we get to include part. So this will include the left top coordinate and the width and height, whichever part of your sprite you want to draw. Unfortunately, it doesn't incorporate rotation as this one did before. The next function is draw sprite general. Now this one has the sprite, the subimage. This is a, the part of the circle as well. So we're going to do the left and top coordinate on our canvas, how wide and how tall it should be when we draw it, how, how much of the canvas is drawn, the position on screen, the X and Y. We get to do the X and Y scale. Now we get to do the rotation. And then we have four colors and an alpha. Now when we do four colors, these four points are the top left, then the top right, then the bottom right, then the bottom left coordinate of each point for the canvas. So it would be a color here, a color here, a color here, and a color here, and how that all blends together. So I'm just drawing that top left part of the circle again, starting at 0, 0, and drawing 32 out and 32 out. So let's just see what that looks like. I'm not affecting it any other way. Like I said, it's nothing special. I'm just drawing the top left coordinate or quadrant of this circle. Now let's kind of mess with that. Now we actually get to affect the scale. So let's make it twice as wide as it should be. And let's change its rotation slightly. Let's go 45 degrees, just a little bit this way. And now let's change it so the top left and the top right colors are both going to be sea white. And let's blend that down into sea blue. So that'll make the third and fourth point, which is the bottom right and the bottom left point, blue. So it'll blend from a white to a blue. And here's what that looks like. Here we go. So it started here at this point. Then it stretched it out on the X twice the normal size because we used two. Then it rotated it 45 degrees. And then as you can see, we've blended from white because this is point 0.1 and point 0.2. And it's blending down to point 0.3 and point four, which we've chosen blue. So you get a lot of options when you do draw sprite general. Now we get to do a really cool thing. I really like this function. This is draw sprite stretched. So as usual, we pick the sprite and the sub image and it's coordinate on the screen, our room, wherever we're drawing it, and then the width and the height. This is kind of like scale, but we're stretching it out in pixels. So it's 64 by 64, right? So if I drew 64 and 64, it should look totally normal. There it is. Once again, it ignores the origin point. So it draws it from the top left. It's totally normal. Didn't do, any, didn't do anything special to it. But now we actually get to use pixels instead of percentages for scale. So I can decide, I don't know, 128. That's 64 times 2. So now it's going to be twice as wide as it used to be. And we can pick anything. I can say 10 10 pixels, that's, that's, I wanted to occupy that amount of space. This makes it a lot easier to fit sprites into a region. So if you had a spot in your room where you knew, okay, I only have 48 by 54, that's like a box I have in my room and I need this sprite to fit. Well, instead of trying to fiddle with X scale and Y scale, you can literally just type in the numbers you need. You could type in 48 and 54 and now you know it's going to fit into that box like let's see what that looks like 
And here we go. It's slightly smaller. It used to be 64 by 64, but I said, no, no, no. Draw it from here and only go out by 48 and only go down by 54. So it's slightly smaller and it's slightly skinnier than it used to be. So there you go. So like I said, if you need to draw a sprite into a region and you know the size of the region in pixels, you can just use draw sprite stretched and then you can actually fit it properly using pixels instead of X scale and Y scale. And of course, you can add EXT to the end of that, and that'll allow you to pick a color blend and the opacity. So you can animate those too if you need the colors to cycle using variables that animate, or alphas that animate have something fade in and out of existence. So that's pretty much the same thing as the original. Now we have draw sprite position. This by far is my favorite function for drawing a sprite. This allows you to pick four coordinates anywhere on your screen and then it maps those coordinates, the same ones like the top left, the top right, bottom right, and bottom left of your canvas for the sprite to the quadrants of the room, like anywhere. So we pick our sprite and our sub-image. Then we pick the X and Y position of our first coordinate, then the X and Y of the next one, and the third one, and the fourth one. So that'll be the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. Now, to show this to you, by the way, you also get to set the alpha channel, so you can decide the opacity when you do this. There's no color change, but you can do the opacity. To make this easier to see what I'm doing, I've taken the exact same coordinates I've written here, and I put them in this script called script box. All I'm doing is drawing four lines around the room, which go exactly to the same coordinates coordinates just so you can see what this particular function is doing now it's really cool here's what it looks like oh boy look how cool this is so what it did was it took the top left coordinate of the canvas from this sprite and I chose a spot in the room to start drawing from then I told the top right part of this canvas to pick a spot and then the bottom right I chose down here and the bottom left I chose here and then it mapped the drawing of this sprite onto a plane so it's kind of got like a 3d effect sure it looks bad let's admit it it looks bad for two reasons one i do have interpolate colors on so it's trying to blend these colors which eh, doesn't look so good but if you had a really nice looking sprite and you didn't go so extreme you can actually kind of like warp and tilt you can even animate these points have them pick random numbers or specific numbers and then it'll look like it's just warping or spinning or whatever this is really i feel one of the coolest drawing functions for sprites now the last one is just tiling the sprite all you do is decide where in the room you want the sprite to start tiling and game maker will automatically bump up the edges of this canvas on the left and bottom of each one until it fills up the entire view not the room just the view so it saves some processing memory because hey if you're not gonna see it if it's outside the view don't draw it we don't need to see that it's just gonna waste processing power and you can do the same thing here with an extended version which just gives you uh, some colors what does it give you the X scale the Y scale the color and the alpha so here's what it is and there's a little trick to it but I'll show you what I mean there it is. It tiled it. It filled the entire room with it. Now I chose the same X and Y coordinate. So what it did was the X and Y coordinate is right here. This is where the object is in my room. So it drew this one and then it just drew the rest based on this position all over the room until it filled up the view or the room, whichever one you have set up. I don't have view set, just the room. So there you go. It tiled it. Now, what's interesting to note is your x and y coordinate see i chose the current x and y coordinate right now here i didn't and i'm stretching the y scale so this circle is going to be now an oblong it's going to be an oval it's going to be taller than it is wide so here's what this one looks like here we go so it filled it in now i chose the x and y coordinate uh, zero. so it started drawing here it drew this one right here and then it just bumped up the edges of the canvas and then drew them all out like this. If I had a lot of like dead space, like empty alpha channel space on this, it would give like a buffer between each one because it will also try to print out the, the spaces in between the alpha channel. Now these fit perfectly in here. None of them are going outside of the room. 
but that's because I chose 0, 0. If I chose the current x and y position where my object is in the room, something different is going to happen, and I'll show you what that is. Obviously, you can see the difference here, right? It's now going outside the screen at the top and outside the screen at the bottom. And the reason for that is because I didn't start drawing here. I started drawing at the current X and Y position. So it drew this one. And based on this position, it drew all the rest bumping up against the edges of this canvas, which resulted in the top and bottom ones being cut off. So it's just something to keep in mind that the position of your tiling matters because if it's not perfectly divisible, the canvas size is not perfectly divisible, it doesn't fit into your room size, it may get cut off somewhere. So you can always pick a position so that it fits in nicely. But that's it for sprites. And now let's go into backgrounds. It really is the exact same thing just with backgrounds. So I've got my regular chalkboard background, but I've also taken from another one of my games this paper background, which isn't anything special, but it'll help me demonstrate this object draw background. Once again, I've got a variable col for coloring white, just so I can blend normally, and this is the object that's drawing that grid. It's just drawing those two lines that we see so we know where the center of the room is. But here is what we want to focus on. The first function is just draw background. It's nothing really special. Of course, you can always draw backgrounds through the room, right? You can go to the backgrounds tab. You can have up to eight backgrounds here. You can decide which one you want to draw. You can decide where the X and Y start, whether to tile it, where to stretch it, whether it's moving with a speed, whatever. It's up to you. But sometimes you want to draw more than one background. You want to manipulate the background in a way and really control it yourself. So you can draw it through an object. And this is just going to draw background. So you have to select it from the background resources. And I've chosen the paper background. And you just select an X and Y coordinate where you want it to start drawing. And here's what that looks like. This is it. Nothing special. This is where I put the object in the room. So that's the X and Y. And then it drew it out on the screen. And that's considered to be a background, not a sprite. But there it is. Now, there are other ways to manipulate backgrounds, and they're very similar to how we were manipulating sprites. We can draw background with an extended part. This will give me uh, an X and Y scale so I can stretch it out. It'll give me a rotation so I can pick a degree. It gives me a color blend and an alpha channel. Same thing as sprite, nothing special. You guys should really understand that by now. You can draw a portion of it, same thing as before. You pick the left and top coordinate, wherever that is on the canvas, and then you decide how far out in pixels you want to expose that part of the background. So this one I'm starting at the very top left corner, and I'm only drawing 160 pixels width and 80 height. So it's only going to draw part of the background, and this is what it looks like, but you've seen it before with sprites. There it is. It started at the X and Y. It drew 160 of the image and 80 of the image, so it's only drawing this portion or this part. Of course, you can add the EXT part to it, and you get your X scale, Y scale, color, and alpha. No rotation when you do the part. I don't know why. It's probably a good reason for it. You can draw background general. This is the one that does have rotation in it. So you can pick the left top width height, so you're drawing a portion of it again. You can pick the X scale, Y scale. This one has rotation, so if you need to rotate it for some reason. But this one has even more blending options for color. This is the one where you get to pick four colors, which is the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left corner, and blend all that color together, and then the opacity or alpha channel. So once again, it's just like the sprites, nothing special. We've got background stretched, same thing, but you use pixels to define how it's stretched instead of a scale. So this is, once again, really good if you know exactly the size of the area. You know, hey, I'm drawing a panel over here in my room, and I know it's 160 wide, and I know it's my room height, which is like 640. So you can actually write that in. You can say, okay, I know it's 160 wide, and I know it's going to fill up my entire room. So I can just type in whatever the height of my room is. And now, uh, I don't know wherever the X and Y will be. We'll probably have to start it at 480X. Um, and the very top of the room, so zero. And there, it'll look something like this.
See, this is if my room needed a panel on the right side. I knew that I wanted to start it here, and I knew I only had a limited amount of space for drawing, which is 160, and I knew I wanted it to be the entire height of the room. That's why I chose room height. So that's how stretched is important. You can manipulate the size of your background. You can't do that if you put it into your room. It's going to fill the whole thing. You either have it stretched, which means it'll just fill the entire room, or not stretched, and it'll try to put whatever the size of your background canvas onto your room, which may not fill it, which means you have to either tile it or whatever. And that's one way drawing backgrounds is definitely a lot more robust than simply allowing the room to do it for you. Also, you can do the extended portion, which allows for a color blend and an alpha. And you can do tiled, which, of course, the room does itself, but this gives you a little more options if you want. You can decide where it starts in the room, and of course, you can move it if you want, because these are just arguments, which are variables, which means you can just put in whatever number you want and have that number either follow the X and Y of another object, or animate in some way. As long as the number's changing, that's pretty much animation. I mean, that's how frames work. The number changes, now it's animation. And then you can tile it with EXT, which will add your color, and your alpha, and the X and Y scale, so you can stretch it out when you tile it, and you can, you know, change the color to it, which is the blend, so it, it blends with whatever color is already there. And I'll go over color blend in another video, but that's it guys. So if you find that simply adding a sprite here is not robust enough, or adding a background through the background tabs of your room just doesn't give you enough options, these are some of the coolest functions you can use for drawing backgrounds and sprites through just standard objects, and then you get to manipulate it yourself and be really in control of how these sprites and how these backgrounds are being drawn.